Okay, go file open. We're going to load Kismet Tutorial Start. Now go over to the Content Browser in your Actor Classes tab, uncheck Show Categories, Expand Pawn and Game Pawn, and we want to drag a mobile placeable pawn into the world. If you double click it, it'll bring open its properties, and we're going to go to the Movement tab, Location, and zero this out with a zero, zero, and on the vertical, let's do a 58. Close movement, open up pawn, mesh, skeletal mesh. Now we want to set three things in here so he can animate correctly. So go back to the content browser. We'll go to the Kismet Game Assets tab and right click and go fully load. Then go down to the Anims folder and filter by Jazz and that'll just show his, us his stuff. Select the uh, SK underscore Jazz skeletal mesh and we'll assign that to the skeletal mesh and then in jazz underscore anim tree and we'll assign that to the anim tree template and then sk underscore jazz anims for the anim set so over here under the anim set section we'll hit the green plus to add a slot for it and then hit the green arrow and that assigns that now he's got all the stuff he needs to animate close those down um, let's select him and then type in col let's check on his collision and if you hit C on the keyboard, it'll show up. You can see the little green cylinder around him is this collision cylinder. So let's make that a little fatter. We'll set it to 35. Looks about right. Now let's set up the camera. So go to the Actor Classes and select on Camera Actor. We want to drag one of those into the world. Double click it. Um, go to its uh, movement location. I'm going to zero this out to 000. zero, zero. We're also going to need two cameras, uh, so if you hold down Alt and drag, you can duplicate that one. Um, so the first camera, we're going to link that to the player. So open up its properties, go to Attachment, and click on the little lock up here, and that will keep this property selected. And then you can click on the character and link it. And then we also want to hit hard attach and ignore base rotation because we don't want this camera to rotate with the player. And we're going to take this camera and end up linking it to this camera, and, but we want to position it first. So close this stuff down, select this camera, and if you hit the little eyeball up here, you'll take over this camera so you can actually easily go and position it to how you want to see it in your game. That looks pretty good. So unclick the eyeball and you can move back and you can see this camera is now up in the air. And if we double click that camera, we also want to open up its camera properties and turn off constraint aspect ratio and we want to set the FOV angle to like 65. And then we also want to go to its attachment tab and hit the lock on it and we want to select the other camera that's linked to the character and base this one off of it and click hard attach. Okay, now that we've got our guy set up to animate and we have our camera set up, let's go ahead and give him some player control. Um, so we're going to do that in Kismet, our visual scripting language. So if you hit the K up here, it'll pop that open. Uh, if you right-click and go New Event, Input, here's all the new mobile stuff that we've added for accessing the tut and tilt uh, data coming off your iOS device. We're going to use the Mobile Look controller, which is basically like a thumbstick controller. You basically have two uh, thumbsticks by default on screen. We're going to use one to for his look direction and the other one for his uh, movement direction. So this will be the right stick, and it's called Uber Stick Look Zone. We'll add that in. Now it's uh, linked up. So now we need to set up the yaw. So if we'll create a new float variable for that, right click, create new float variable. We're going to take the yaw, which is basically the direction that the stick's pointing towards, and set it into a vector component. So go new action, math, set vector component. And we're going to drive the y with the yaw. And we're going to output that into a vector. So right click on output vector and create a new vector variable. And then connect the input active to the input on set vector component. And then from that, we want to set the actor location and rotation which is new action actor set actor location and we're going to set the rotation for this actor from this output vector so connect that to the rotation input and then connect the two nodes together and select the this node and I also want to turn off set location because we only want to set rotation on this guy um, so now that that's hooked up let's give it something to drive we're going to drive our little pawn guy with it so select him and then right click and go new object var using mobile placeable pawn zero 
and that'll assign our pawn as the thing to be controlled by this thumbstick. Uh, okay, so we should be all good with our rotation. Okay, now let's set up the movement control. So we'll just take the look control and hit Control C, Control V to paste it. Uh, we can right click, break all links, and then select it. And we're going to change this to move zone instead of look zone. So this will use the left stick. Now we need to right click on strength and add a new float variable. We're going to take the strength, which is basically the uh, how far away from the center of the control the thumbstick is, and that's going to drive our speed. And then also we're going to take the direction to drive the movement direction. So let's uh, now we have our speed here. Let's take that and we want to create a rotation vector as well. So we'll right click and create a new variable for that. We're going to need to. I want to take this variable, the speed variable, and multiply it by a variable so it's easy to change the speed. So let's go new action uh, math. We want to multiply float. And then we want to derive that from the strength. And then we want to create a new variable for the b to multiply it by. So create a new variable for that. And then we want to create a new bar variable for the float result. And so when it's active, we're going to drive the initial strength by multiplying it by this variable, which I, let's set that to like three times. And then we're going to dump that variable out into the float result. And we're going to take the float result and use it to set the velocity for this guy. So let's do a new action actor, set velocity. And we'll drive that into there, set our target to our little pawn guy. And then we want to drive the velocity direction from the rotation vector and the velocity magnitude from the result of our mag multiply float. And that should set us up to uh, make it move around by the speed of how far away the stick is from the center. Okay, now that we got this control set up so that when the control is active, he's moving the player around by the strength, um, we need to set up what happens when you let off. So what we want to do is uh, manually, you know, kind of slow him down to come to a stop. The thing is with this control is when it's active, it's sending out a constant stream of data, but when the the thing inactive trigger is fired, it's only a one-time thing. So we need to set up a little condition down here, comparison, to, to loop it through and to bring him to a stop. So let's do that by going new condition, uh, comparison, compare float. And we want to compare our speed variable here in the A input to a new variable that we'll create of zero. So say when inactive, go into this comparison. If the number is greater than zero, then we want to do something. What we want to do is subtract. So go new action, math, subtract float. And we want to subtract from the speed variable. Uh, we want to subtract 20. So I'll put a new variable with 20. And then we want to dump the result of that back into the speed variable. OK, so if A is bigger than B, subtract 20 and write it back into the variable. And then we need to set the velocity again. So let's take that set velocity up there, hit Control C, Control V to create a copy. You can leave these connections the way they are. We want them to be the same. Um, the reason we're making two of these is because we want to loop this one and we don't want to loop that one. So go to the select uh, set velocity output and right click and you can actually go set active delay. I'm going to set that to 0.01. And so now, after it gets done, it'll loop back through the comparison, and if the number is still greater than zero, it'll reduce it by 20 and keep going through until it comes to a stop. We don't want the number to go below zero, so to prevent that, we're going to do a new action set variable uh, float. So if the number is less than or equal to zero, or actually just less than and zero, we want to set it to zero. So we will create a new float variable of zero and then drive that into the set velocity and we need to set the target to the speed variable as well. So now we got it all set up to bring you to a stop smoothly. Okay now that we have his control set up let's go ahead and give him his gun. So let's close Kismet. Go around here so we can see his right hand. Open up the content browser. Drag SK underscore jazz gun into the world. If you go up to view here and go enable socket snapping and then you can just click on the little socket into his right hand and they'll put the gun in there and attach it up and now he's got his gun. 
Okay, now let's make his gun shoot. So we'll go back into Kismet, and then we'll go up to the shooting area that I added. And we're going to right click, go new action, actor, uh, projectile factory. Select that, and we also want to open up the content browser, and go down to projectile. Get rid of the jazz filtering. Select our projectile factory. We want to add a archetype to it under the factory, and then we want to point the archetype to the Blaster 01, so type in Blaster 01, and that links that up. So now when this is fired, it will actually launch this projectile here. We also want to set up a muzzle flash, so if you open, scroll up in the projectile factory settings, and the PS template is, is the particle system to use for the muzzle flash. So we want to use the blaster muzzle 02, so select it, and then hit the green arrow, and it will assign it. And then the socket name, this is the the socket on the gun that we want to assign uh, for the projectile to be launched from, and so there's a socket called muzzle, M-U-Z-Z-L-E, on the front of the uh, gun that we just added. So we also need to select our gun and then add it as the spawn point under the projectile factory. So now whenever this fires it will launch a projectile from this socket at the barrel here. Now we need to set up how we're going to trigger this projectile factory. We want to use the uh, mobile look from the right stick. So let's go... The problem with that is it's a continuous stream of data and we need to kind of limit how often it's going to shoot. So we're going to do that by going new action switch and add a switch. And We're going to select the switch and set the link count to 2. And this is basically like a gate so whenever the signal comes in from the right stick if uh, this index variable that we create is set to 1, it's going to spawn a projectile. And then also at that time we're going to go new action, set variable, integer, and we're going to set the index to variable of 2. So that may, it basically is dumping it into 2 and that's not going to go anywhere so it's going to stop it from firing. And then we're going to add a new action miscellaneous delay and then we're gonna set our delay to get your float variable there and we're gonna set it to like 0.2 and then after that we're going to we can copy this set integer over to here and we're gonna break that link and so once the delay is done it's gonna set this index variable back to 1 so every 0.2 seconds it'll fire the projectile basically and there we go okay let's select all this and straighten it up a bit now all we have to left to do is uh, set up our camera so let's go and go a new event level loaded so when the level is loaded we want to go new action camera set camera target and we want to select our camera that we have in the world that's the uh, the game camera we want to assign that to the cam target and if you hold down P and click, it'll add a variable for the player. So basically, when level is loaded invisible, we want to set that camera as the camera that the player sees through. Now we're pretty much done, other than one thing, the other thing we want to do, now that we're using our own custom pawn, we need to take uh, control away from the other game pawn. So to do that, we're going to go new action, toggle, and then toggle input. And we're going to turn off input to the uh, regular player. And so we just set the target of this to the same player icon. And we should be good to go. We should have a playable game now. We should be able to move around and shoot. Before I run this, I want to add a quick blob shadow. So go to your mesh tab and grab SM Shadow 01. Right click and add an interp actor. Hit F4. Uh, we want to set this to be 7, 0, and 13 with a draw scale of 0.8 and we want to lock the lock select our player base it on him to a hard attach and uncheck shadow parented now he's got a shadow now I want to go ahead and run this on the mobile previewer and I'm going to use the UDK remote which is a free app on the app store that will let you use your iPhone as an input device to control it these two work great together and allow you to iterate on your game really quickly